Hi, it's Monica with It's Just Sewing. I am so excited that you're here. Today I'm going to teach you how to make the pleated zipper pouch. Now this is obviously holiday season and we're making these as gifts, but it is clearly a tutorial you could use any time throughout the year. So I broke this tutorial into three separate parts. The first part is taking fat quarter bundles and learning how to cut them super efficiently and effectively using a technique called stack and whack, which I know sounds a little crazy it's really fun. All right, so the second video is going to be all about how to make pleats. And once you learn how to make pleats, you'll be amazed how often you can use this technique um, when you're sewing. The third video is the dreaded zipper. Yep, I'm going to teach you how to put in a zipper for a lined bag. And this is, again, a technique that no matter what kind of bag you make, if it's lined, you will know how to put in a zipper very easily, very effectively. All right, so stay tuned. I can't wait to show you how it's done. So today I am going to work with a fat quarter bundle and the reason I'm going to do that, I'll show you the technique in a few minutes, but basically I'm going to do that because I have all sorts of coordinating fabrics and maybe I want to do a band in one color on my pleated zipper pouch and in the bottom, the body of the pouch, I want it to be a different color and when I look inside, I want that to be a different fabric. And so this gives us lots of options to kind of mix and match and, and coordinate all of our zippered pouches together. Um, when you get a um, fat quarter bundle, what you want to know is they're roughly, I would say roughly, 17 by 21 inches, so give or take. And I'm going to show you um, how to cut them in just a few minutes. But when you first get them, go ahead and iron them like I just did. And now I want to take you over and show you on the cutting mat how to do a technique called stack and whack. And I know it sounds a little suspicious, so don't worry. I'm going to be really gentle with you. Okay, let's get going. All right, so I'm starting by stacking all of my fat quarters right on top of one another. And I'm doing it so that it's 18 inches by 22 inches long. So you're going to take your ruler. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and start by cutting at the 2 inch line. I'm going to hold that down. These are going to be the bands of our zippered pouch. Now, I want to go six inches over, so that's going to put me at the eight inch line. So I'm cutting now at the eight. And then I want to go eight more inches over, so I'm going to go ahead and cut at the 16. All right, so now I have a two inch by 21, 22 inch um, strip. I have a 6 by 22, 21 inch, and I have an 8 by 22, 21 inch. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all of them into the right sizes, okay? So let's start with our band. So with our band, ultimately what I need is I need two sets of each of the prints. I need two sets of 2 inch by 8 inch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and line it up a little bit over the um, 0 inch line. And I want to cut right at the zero inch line, okay? So that's the first thing I want to do. Then I want to go to eight inches and 16 inches. Bands are ready to go. All right, now this is the body of my bag, the outside body. So what I'm going to do, and it's six inches right now, and ultimately what I want is I want six inches by ten inches twice. So again, what I'm going to do is just clean up the very first edge by putting it on a little bit over the zero inch line. Clean that up and go to ten inches. My 10 has been used a lot. And to my 20 inch. All right. Bodies are done. Now I bet you know what we're going to do next, our lining. And again, take it a little bit over the edge of the zero line. Clean that up. And then go to 10. And remember, this is your 8 inch um, pieces. And then this goes to the, oh, got to get on it. Don't mess up. 20 inch. All right. So this is the benefit of stack and whack. Now I have, um, linings, bodies, 
and trim pieces in every single color so I can start coordinating. And how cool is that? So remember, you need two linings. And so let's just pick this out. I'm going to do this one for the lining. I think I will do, ooh, ooh, I'm getting crazy. I'm going to do red for the front, and I'll do white for the band. So that's what I'm going to work with today. But you can see I can coordinate and mix and match and make just a ton of different designs and styles that are all going to blend beautifully together. So if you give them as a gift to one person, they're going to have coordinating ones. Or if you give it to a bunch of different people, you've kind of got a theme going with your holiday gift giving. So stack and whack wasn't so scary, was it? All right, stay tuned for our next video. We're going to show you how to make pleats for your pleated zipper pouch. Okay, so it's time to make a pleat, and I promise you this is going to be so easy. You'll be amazed how often you use it, too. You can use it in skirts, in aprons. Sky's the limit. So here we go. All right, so now it's time for us to create a pleat in the outer area of our zippered pouch. Take the fabric that's going to be the body, which is the red. We're going to put off to the side our lining as well as our band fabric and just focus solely on this. Now it's directional in, in its print, this particular one is, so if you have a directional print, pay extra special attention to that. We want to create our pleat actually at the top, not um, at the bottom. Okay, first of all, this is our 6 by 10 inch band, so what you want to do is find your middle point, which we know is 5 inches, but a really easy way to do that is to go ahead and put your finger down, fold it in half and press your finger down and create a little tiny fold. And then you want to use a little sewing gauge. And I am going to set my sewing gauge at one inch. And what I want to do is I want to take my fabric right at the fold and go over exactly one inch and I'm going to put a pin there. And then I do the exact same thing. Start again at the fold and go one inch over and put another pin. All right, now you're going to take where your first pin is and fold it in to your middle crease. Okay? And then take that pin out and repin all three layers together. Same thing on the other side. Go ahead and fold where the pin is into the middle point fold. You're going to do this with both sides of the fabric. Now I'm going to take it on over to the ironing board and I am going to give it a nice little iron all the way down. Great, so I've done it on both and both are ready to go. Now the next thing I need to do is attach my band to the outer body. All right, pretty sides are touching to the top, the upper part of your um, body fabric. And you are going to, first of all, start in the middle and attach all those layers together right where the fold is and pin your way out. Once I'm done here, I'm going to take it on over to the sewing machine and get started. All right, now we're going to attach the band to the outer body. And all you need to do is just line it up, and we're going to sew on down. I gave myself a 3 8 inch seam allowance, or basically I set my needle right in the middle position, and I'm using the outer edge of the presser foot as my guide. So that's how I like to sew. You can choose however you want. So let's go ahead, and we're going to reinforce at the front end and reinforce at the back end. and we're attached. Now all we need to do is go ahead and take it on over to the ironing board and we are going to iron our fold flat. But I want you to do this. I do want you to fold it so that your um, raw edges go up. Your fold, your excess fabric in the back goes up and towards the, the um, band. All right, hot off the press. Doesn't that look nice? Now the reason that I wanted you to um, iron this this fold towards the band is because we actually want to sew that down so no matter how many times we wash it it is always going to stay intact and look really nice so in order to do that what I want to do is I want to line up this uh, seam right here with the outer edge now of the presser foot and I actually want to reposition my needle to be the furthest to the left so it's closest to that side of the presser foot and I'm gonna go ahead and sew and I want to reinforce at the front end and the back end and I didn't say this before but this is a fantastic opportunity if you want to to use decorative stitches especially if you're using a solid fabric it's a really great little added touch that you can add to your bag as a gift or for yourself 
outer lining is complete. Woohoo! Wasn't that so much fun and so easy making pleats? All right, now it's time for us to hop on over to the next video and learn how to install that zipper. Don't be freaked out. It's easy and a simple, simple technique is going to take the fear out of this whole process. So let's get started. Okay, so the time has come. We're going to go ahead and install our zipper. So I want you to sit back, relax, and watch the tutorial fully so you can see how simple putting in a zipper can actually be. Okay, my front is done and I'm going to start by attaching my one of my fronts to the lining with a zipper in the middle. Okay, first thing we need to do is size up our front and our back together so that they're the right size. So I want to take my um, body, my outer body, and I want to make my pretty sides kiss. Oh, it's like mistletoe in here. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and have those two um, pretty sides touching. And I want you to go ahead and trim up all the way around so that they're the exact same size. All right, so I've cleaned up all of my edges and both my lining and my front fabrics match, which is exactly where I want to be. Now it's time to install the zipper. Now I am using a polyester zipper. This is important, okay? It's not a metal zipper. And so because it's a polyester zipper, I'm actually able to um, cut it to size after I've put everything together. So this is 14 inches right now. This is eight inches, doesn't matter, okay? Okay, so. Here's the top where I'm going to install my zipper, and you want to look closely, okay? I have the zipper facing up. I'm going to have the pull part on my right side and my stopper part on the left side. And what I want to do is open this up and nestle that zipper right inside. And notice that the upper portion of the zipper is flush with the upper portion of the lining material. And now I am sandwiching it in between the top, zipper, and bottom. All right, so all three are flush at the top. So this is easy zipper installation. We're going to go ahead and um, pin it all the way down. And then I'm going to take you over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew it up. All right, I'm getting ready to install the zipper. And what I want you to know is that I did not change to a zipper foot, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. You can use your regular foot and it's just fine. I made sure that my needle positioning was all the way over to the left-hand side and I want to hug the teeth of the zipper up to the outer edge of the presser foot. And if you can do that and keep it going all the way down, hugged nicely up, then it's gonna be a beautiful, um, seam line all the way down, okay? Nice, nice stitch line. So what I wanna do is I want to go ahead and get started and go slow at this point. There's no sense in going fast. You will have a much better product if you are, um, you know, just taking your time with it and being patient, okay? So we wanna get started and we do wanna back up, so we're gonna give our reverse button a little love. And we're gonna sew all the way down. And last thing, lock it in. Okay, let's see how it looks. Oh, that looks lovely. So there's the front, and there's my back. Okay, now we're going to do zipper installation part two. All right, so the first half of my zippered pouch is already sewn together with the zipper. And what I wanna do is I wanna lay that flat with the pretty side facing up towards me, okay? And what you'll notice now is if you're really looking at it, um, when we were sandwiching it before, we had the pulling side on the left. Well, it's reversed now. We've got the pull side on the right, and we have our stopper for the zipper on the left-hand side. So that's how you should be looking at this. All right, I also cut to scale um, the, other, the other half of my zipper pouch, and so that's ready to go as well. So we're going to, we sandwiched it before when we were putting the zipper um, together with the front and the back. We're gonna make an even bigger sandwich this time. So take your free-floating lining fabric from your other half and lay that on the cutting mat or your surface, whatever you're using is fine. And then you want to lay your zippered um, half that's already been sewn in, you wanna lay that on top of the lining and you want to get it, you know, get it nice and flush so that it looks like it's evened up on all sides. But the most important thing, and this is what confuses people, is that the top of this zipper should be flush 
with the top of the new lining that we're using, okay? And you're gonna lay that down. And now you're taking your free-floating um, front side that has not been sewn in yet, and you're going to lay that on top too. So, again, it's nice and evened up because we want it to all come together beautifully, okay, on those sides. But the most important thing is that all three layers need to, the raw edges should be hitting the top of that zipper, and we are going to pin it together. And we're pinning it, and then we're going to hit the sewing machine in a second. All right, everyone, we're at the exact same point as before. We are getting ready to install this zipper. We're going to get our zippered teeth right up next to the edge of the presser foot. And I'm going to go ahead and don't forget to reinforce at the front end and reinforce at the back end. Okay, so I'm all done. And if I open this up, what you'll find is I now have the zipper facing up and the lining on the back. So it's ready to be assembled now. The time has come for us to sew our zipper pouch finally together. All right, so now what I want you to do, the very first thing I want you to do is I want you to take the zipper and I want you to unzip it halfway down. And then the second thing I want you to do is I want you to take your zipper and I want you to fold it. So what you're looking at is the teeth will be on the bottom and the two uh, polyester pieces will be folding in towards each other. This is gonna be important when it comes to assembling and sewing over the zipper. So what I do is I, I first start by pinching it and then I just put a little pin in it. And I'm doing this on both sides. So as I do this, the natural inclination is that the fabric wants to fold over so that the two red fronts are touching, and that's exactly what you want. And I'm going to take my lining and put those two together. So you've got your blue lining touching your blue lining, pretty sides facing. You've got your red front and your red front touching, pretty sides facing. And what we're going to do is we're going to pin all the way around the zippered pouch, but we need to leave an opening at the bottom of the lining side. This is important, okay, because that's going to help us pull it right side out. I would say make it about three and a half to four inches in width and make sure to reinforce at the front and the back. All right, so let's get to pinning. So I'm going to go ahead and line up the edge of my presser foot with the perimeter of the um, bag, and I'm going to go ahead and get started, okay? So Again, leaving myself, I'm going to plan on leaving myself about a three and a half to four inch um, insert or space so that I can pull my um, bag inside out at the end, okay? And I always reinforce at the very end and at, of course, the very beginning. When I get to the corner, I want to make sure that I pivot, okay? Alright, so I'm getting close to my zipper. There's no need to panic, okay? You can sew right over this zipper. Just go slowly, alright? You're going to hear it in the machine. Did you hear that? Alright, one thing that I like to do is I actually like to back stitch over the zipper a few times just to make sure that it sounds really, really good and gets it really nicely locked in. Okay, I'm getting ready to go over that second zipper. I want to go over it. And back stitch, go over it again. Okay, I'm almost to the end. I'm back where I started, and I want to give myself that bit of room to pull it inside out. So I'm going to go about another inch and an inch and a half, and back stitch. All right, so sewing is almost completely done. All right, nobody ever believes me that you can cut a zipper. Now again, it cannot be a metal zipper, it needs to be a polyester zipper, but the biggest rule is do not use your beautiful, wonderful scissors. You want to use a crafty pair that have been used on every single thing from paper to chicken bones in your house. But you can easily cut right down the center. And since we went ahead and sewed over our corners multiple times, that's going to be our new stopping point. So you don't even need that metal clamp. So this is exactly what I did. I went ahead and I cut 
where my zipper was sticking out, I cut right there flush. So this is what your lining will look like once it's done. Doesn't that look nice? Now it's the big reveal. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up any big long extra um, threads before I turn it inside out. And I'm gonna stick my little hand in. Woo, this is the exciting part. All right, so you wanna pull all the way from the lining. Look at my sweet, sweet bag. Oh, it's darling. Now I will definitely give this a little press and I'll work out those little edges a little bit better. But oh my gosh, how adorable is that? And look at my sweet little lining. Now don't forget, you wanna go back in and you wanna sew up your lining, which is real easy. You can either do that on the sewing machine. You know, nobody's gonna see that inner part anyways. That's where you put all your goods. Um, but you want to sew that up so it doesn't get lost. And then you can also do it by hand if you want. So it's your choice. But then your little bag is done. So our pleated zipper pouch is done. And wasn't that easy? I promised you, zippers are not so scary. So if you liked the video, please definitely follow us. You can follow us on social media, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of those channels. But the best way to get our information really does come from our newsletters. And as an added incentive, I've started sticking discount codes for fabric discounts inside of our newsletters. And I don't give that out anywhere else. So make sure you sign up for our newsletters. Even better, open the newsletters. Okay, I'm going to have all sorts of fun DIY holiday gift giving ideas coming your way this season. So make sure to follow us and I am so excited to be a part of your holiday gift giving. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.